When it comes to multi screwdrivers, nobody touches Mega Pro. These are the best screwdrivers on the market, hands down. I love them. And they come with a lifetime guarantee. So you buy this tool once and that's all you need to do. It has 12 different tips in the back right here and you have a nut driver in the front. Great tools. Megapro.net, don't forget it. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today I'm gonna cover cutting my shoe molding. And I'm not just using it for the base like you'd normally do. I'm just gonna show you how to cut shoe molding. In this case, I'm gonna use it to case out this window, my side lights. I redid this door and uh, this door had holes in it right here and here from a knocker. I filled them with some Bondo and I used this stuff called stainable primer. It's almost like having a liquid veneer. I could make this white look just like this easily. All you do is prime it and come back over and stain it. You can glaze it or do whatever you want once the stain's on there. It has wood in it. Really neat stuff. There's a link on here where to get it from. You can get it at Paul's Toolbox or at staincraft.com. Now I'm going to cover a few different ways to get this miter cut and some of them you probably haven't seen before so check this out. Okay this is the way I do my inside measurements every time and I never have a problem. I always take a measurement from one side to a number that I can add easily because I'm a simple minded person. So I have five inches right here I'm going to put a mark right at five inches. Now I'll take it from the opposite end and I'll go right to that line that was five inches and this is seven inches. I know what my measurement is, it's 12 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this off and get a straight cut just to show you how easy it is to work with. Now I have a clean piece right here and I want to get an inside miter cut. I'm going to measure this the same way. I'll come down to an even 30 inches. And then I'm going to get the inside measurement. So I have 50 and 7 sixteenths. So I have 80 and 7 sixteenths. I'm going to write that on here. Set this in place. I'm using my grip line tape by Swanson Tool Company because this thing grabs onto everything. So all I have to do is set it up here, put it right on the end. I'll pull this to 80 and 7 sixteenths. You can cut your long pieces a hair longer if you want. In between, uh, you can cut it a 32nd of an inch longer if you want. If it's a real long span, I'll cut a 16th of an inch longer. The reason is, you can belly the center out, and when you push it in, it jams it really tight. Now, you don't want it too big, but if you have a long piece, you can do that. You can flex it and push it in that way. You can't do that with short pieces, only long ones. When you're installing small trim like this, you don't want to have giant nails. This is the perfect size. It's an inch and a quarter nail, and it's 18 gauge, which is a, a thin nail. If you're using a hand nail, you're going to use a little inch and a quarter or, or one inch nail, probably an inch and a quarter. You want it to bite a little bit in here. I always do my short pieces first because this piece can flex or you, if you put the, the side pieces in and you try to jam this short piece in there, it doesn't flex at all and it's hard to get in. So I'm going to put this in first, tack it in place, okay, then I'm going to shoot my bottom one in. I'm going to tack this in place. Now I'm ready for my side pieces. I take this, I'll push it into position, and then I'm going to bow the center out so I can get the bottom to fit tightly. Now you see how it's, it's really tight? I put it a little bit longer, or I cut it a little bit longer. Now all I have to do is push it in and tack it in place. Next, I'm going to show you how I would coat this. 
Coping is a way to, to marry your two pieces if you have crooked corners. The coping will hide it and this works great for paint grade because you can run a tiny bead of caulk in the corner. I'll take it and mark the line straight so I can line my blade up with it. To cope it, I'm going to take and get a miter cut right here, an inside miter cut, okay? And then I'm going to cut the meat out and that's going to make this sit perfectly. Let's go to the saw because I want to show you how you would cut this on a saw and then I'm going to show you how to cope it with your coping saw. If I want to make an inside cut here, I would set my blade 45 degrees because that's what my angle is over there. It's a 90 degree angle, so two 45s make a 90. And I'm going to make this inside cut. So I'll set it down. To make the opposite end, I'll just flip it over to the other end of the saw and do the same. Now, I'll put it in the middle and show you how this works. Okay, there's the inside corner. Now I'm going to show you how to do an outside corner. When I turn it to the 45 here, I want to cut away from my wood. If I cut away from my good piece that I'm going to use, then it's an outside cut on this. So let me show you. I'm cutting away from this link because this is my good piece and that's an outside cut. So I'm going to do the same thing with this piece and show you how they go together. I'm cutting away from it because this is my good piece right here. This is my trash. So if I was trying to wrap around something like this, the edge of a wall or something, you can see what an outside cut looks like. Next, we're going to go ahead and make an inside cut right here so I can show you how to cope it. I'm going to take my shoe molding. I'm cutting into my length of wood that I'm going to use. That's an inside cut. Here's the meat, and I want to cut this on a, an angle, 45 degrees or more, so it, it sets in with the other piece. Now, I'm going to take it right on this edge and I just cut it. Back it up just a little bit so I can get a bite on it because my teeth are facing forward. I want to get a bite. All right, get a good grip so you can hold it tight. You see how easy it cuts? You just follow that line all the way around. The great thing about coping when you're working with houses that may be crooked is you take your flat piece and this wall can be crooked. It can go this way or this way and this is still going to work right. You see? Here's a 90. I can even go further way out and it's still going to give me a nice a nice clean line right there. This is how it would go together. You take your coat piece and you push it right down on it. All right, another job out the way. You can see this was really simple with these snips. The saw is very simple too, and coping it is not bad. Coping is great if you have corners that are off, but if it's something like this where everything's nice, you have nice 90 degree turns, those snips are fantastic. The only problem with the snips is you cannot cut a tiny sliver off of that. Just keep that in mind. And if you go to cut other degrees of angle, it's a little harder because the fence that they have on there doesn't cover those areas. It's only your 45s for the fence, so you could hold it tightly against that and get a perfect cut every time. Other than that, you'd have to mark your line, I would say, to get a really good cut. All right, I'll see you on the next project. Don't forget to subscribe and check out paulstoolbox.com because I have all my other videos covering how to do this door, how to do the floor, how to do all types of things on your house. I'll see you on the next project. Thanks.